guys, it's Green Deja, and in today's video, I will be reacting right to episode 17 and 18 of Magical Girl Lyrical Nanoha Strikers. Let's go ahead and get started with episode 17 in 3, 2, 1, go. Let me charge this thing just in case. Oh my god. Mm -hmm. Bear, no. Mouse, thank you. Just in case it dies on me. You never know. But what if he doesn't want to tell you? Like, at the end of the day, it is none of your business, baby. <laughs> We're on a clock. We're on the clock. Like, mm -mm. we don't have time for this. body won't be able to handle that, huh? Like Megamine when she uses explosion? That makes the most sense. You poor baby, you fell for that. And you fell for it good. Shh. 
patience. Great. Oh, it did so good. That means if both of them are having this problem, everybody's having this problem. Just in the short hours between this last episode from last week and this week. Jesus Christ. You just gonna leave it like that with her with them? You can't do that, my heart.
What I feel like Faith's gonna about to tell them. Yeah. Uh-huh. See? I had that feeling. <laughs> So you have to go. It's for your protection, your safety. She doesn't want to see either one of you get hurt. Girl, what the hell? I'm mm mm. mm. Focus, focus on Bina. That's her sister. She can't lose her. That's the only family she has left. I, okay. Oh, shit.
Subaru about to kill this girl. They all lost everything today. Not only Subaru. PTSD was fucking real, Jesus. And they just took video like that. Damn, his story is similar to fate in a nutshell. Oh my god. But wait, you can't! Oh, uh, they all get taken down one by one. I don't like this. Can I just say right there in that moment, none of these key didn't sound like fate. Home, homegirl just sounded like Ricky Super. <laughs>
don't care. I mean, still, like, uh, honestly, even with her cute little light voice, she was like, nope, mm-mm, mm-mm. See, y'all say that now, but, um, something gonna happen. She gonna defeat y'all ass. We are, this is fate we are talking about here. I felt even more for him because in that moment... Ma'am, my honey, um, this the child just summoned fucking Godzilla. Oh, my God. Not the bunny. Okay, so as I basically said with this episode, everyone, everyone except the bad guys got a loss in their own way. But I feel like the guy who was watching over Vivio and Subaru, they got the ultimate losses here. Subaru lost her sister. And Subaru, in my opinion, went into a rage mode, essentially, because, like I said, that is the only, her final living human relative. That made no sense for human relative. <laughs> her final, hu um, <laughs> I can't even say it right. Her final living relative that she knows as of right now who is still with her so of course she's going to keep her sister very near and dear to her heart she doesn't want anything happening to her sister because she truly loves her so freaking much but to see her sister in that moment bloodied and bruised can feel her pain you feel her pain and her rageness and everything and so now she's going to blame herself because she wasn't th with the fact that she wasn't that strong enough to save her sister 
And I don't know if she's going to probably get through that. Even with the guy who was helping Vivio and his PTSD coming to him in the form of a child walking into a, or into a room, finding out that it is a kid and you holding up your weapon towards that child when you're trying to shoot someone else and you shoot her in the eye. Oh, and of course, everyone is going to be pointing wings at high attack fingers at her because of the fact is of what has all. <laughs> oh God, sleep is coming with me, catching up to me. What has all had? What all has transpired in the last couple of episodes? Like, yes, this these episodes have been really good in everything, the emotional, the battle, everything else in between for it, but. Now, this is when it's like, all right, who do we need to blame for this? Okay, you. Hi, Ate. It's too much. And I, I don't know how everyone is truly going to handle it. Everyone's going to have different ways of handling this situation. How I feel bad for Kettle because, you know, Edio got hurt right in front of her. And initially, all she could do was just cry. But in that moment, she also was vulnerable and she used the last little bit of her strength to summon this Godzilla looking thing being like, don't destroy my home. Don't take this away from me because this is the last of the thing I have left. Fate. Once again, love you, baby. You always kicking some ass regardless. Even with the fact it's her next battle where they were like, oh, the next time you see us, you're not going to be defeating us. Oh, hold up, baby. Hold up. Stitch behind up inside, be an audience member just like the rest of us. Like, girl, no, D stop, stop. Like, <laughs> you don't know what the fuck is coming your way. I mean, seriously, this is fate. Fate always, like, and this is the same thing with Nanoha, they always have something up their scheme. They are the magical girls of this show. And so, no matter what, fate will always be in their favor. Fate and Anaha will always win. Yes, they will have maybe a win or a loss or a couple of times more draws, whatever, but they will always win. Love will always end up, you know, saving the day. It prevails. Same thing with friendship. Um, one more thing I will say. Once again, this is also going into, you know, Fate and Nanoha's um, other friends are really Nanoha's friends. I still hate the fact that we are now 17 episodes into the show, have not seen those two yet. Like, are they coming at the end of the series? Because, seriously, they, I mean, I get it because, once again, they're not as important as they were, like, in the first, like, when I watched the movies and the first couple of seasons and such. I get it, but it would still be nice, you know, especially when we were having older characters from the older series coming back as an adult now and, you know, getting reintroduced into it. So, hopefully, fingers crossed, that happens. But go ahead and pause the video and I will see you guys in one second for episode 18. Okay, episode 18 in three, two, one, go. Unfortunately, they succeeded. See, one thing I didn't talk about in the previous episode, more on her eyes, like, was Subaru also, like, fixed by the doctor because we've never seen her do that before so that was that makes me very suspicious on her Also, the fact that they are starting the new opening with her, oh.
it wouldn't also surprise me if a lot of people end up leaving after this situation where they're like, you know what? Here's my resignation. I don't want to be in this anymore. Yeah, it's just worried about Subaru. That's good. But she's hiding her feelings. You go talk to Sibiru. Mm -hmm. You want to go see her. I know, I miss her too. All right, if we do not get a Nanoha Fate episode focus where they hug each other, I'm gonna cry. Uh -uh. But still, you were hurt, both of you. And you gotta drink something. Good. Oh. Uh -huh. 
<laughs> the fact is, they just like read the room. We're gonna go do this. We'll be back. Oh. I'm sorry, right? Right, that too. It was inevitable, it was bound to happen. But at least you're okay. If not all that can save the video, you can save your sister. Because once again, you all lost something in the previous episode. If they not married, they marry now. That really just confirmed it for those two. Mm -hmm. Of course, leads back to him once again. Because he is our villain for this season. Mm. It took a minute to own. Yeah. Yeah, looked exactly like her, so it made the most sense to take them both in. But just hide the secret that they were cyborgs. Even in death, she's pretty.
Well, damn, you don't gotta be bitchy about it. Okay, and, and, and what does she do? Don't be <laughs> bullshit, beat around the bush or anything. Don't try to hide anything. man over here having a heart attack I'll always need you for something. Mm hmm.
Something secretly tells me that she knows, but she's just trying to avoid seeing him die. And of course, that's with everyone. No one wants to see the person that they truly love and care about die, especially in front of them. Also, why do I feel like, okay, because of the fact is that they took Jenny and now they're trying to, you know, convert her to their side. We're going to get a Jenny Subaru fight and I don't like that. I don't want that. I mean, hold up, and what if she doesn't? What if this is just the doctor, just once again, with every other freaking person playing and just screwing y'all over? We've seen this time and time again. Fate was the first one, so come on, we know the signs! There we go. There we go. Yes. That's what I needed. That's what I ever needed. I don't want to see this.
Oh, that hurt. I'm crying. I'm about to tear up. Oh my god. <laughs> Like I said, I draw a line at kids. I, I don't like seeing kids get hurt. It hurts so much to the core. Like, oh my God, it's just, they're precious babies. You don't want anything happening to them. And I feel for Nana because she's like, there's nothing I can do. And Vivio is alone and scared and she's crying out and no one can help her and it, and it hurts. It really truly hurts and it's like, oh my god, you want to do, oh fuck, you want to do something to save them. But this is the thing, like sometimes you can't always save everyone and so I think Nanoha is getting that but we know in her heart that she is going to say Vivio. Like, I, I'm truly scared for the baby. I don't want anything happening to her. But whatever is about to happen in these last couple of weeks of this season, I am I'm scared. I think the last time I was this scared was between movie two and movie three. Very much so. Let her come home safely. That's all we want. That's all I want. Now, I feel like from this preview that we just got, hold on. Like, literally, my glasses are going the hell out of me. Ugh, okay. So, from this preview, number one, we're getting more or less like the training sequence and such one more time because everybody is like you know what i was strong at that moment but during that battle i feel like or i realized how weak i was as a um as a fighter so especially for um edio i feel like he's going to get the most physical moments of training next week from that preview but i mean Everybody's gonna have moments about this. I felt like we're going to get a little more of Nanaha really truly breaking down on the fact is that yeah, she could not keep her promise to Vivio. Like seeing her and Fate having their little moment together was sweet and bittersweet. Uh <laughs> sweet and bittersweet. Um uh, yeah, that makes sense. Sweet and bittersweet at the time. And, you know, you love when they have moments of that together because you just, the love that these two have for each other and the fact that they want to do everything in their power to not only save themselves for, from everyone else, but to save everyone else that they love and care about. But in that moment, she just knows, like, damn. The, the baby. My baby. Even though that's not her baby, but still, her baby. She can't save her right now. And so who knows when they do get there, what is going to happen in Vivio? Um, like I said, the same thing with the prediction. I feel like because the reason why they took Jenny is not only for experimenting on, but I feel like the next time we do see Jenny, it's going to be very similar to, okay, I, I cannot believe I'm going to compare this to this, but here we go. If you have seen or even read the Hunger Games trilogy and stuff, so if you know, you probably know what I'm about to talk about, but if you don't, if you have not seen slash read the Hunger Games trilogy, please go ahead and stop the video now. If you don't care, you can keep listening to everyone else. You can also keep listening. Who knows? Spoilers. So at the end of book slash movie two, um... Once Katniss, you know, did what she did and such to, you know, not only save everybody and such, but also everyone separating themselves. And when um, President Snow caught both um, PETA and uh, what's her face and the fact that PETA was now on Snow's side because Snow brainwashed him and everything, um, we knew that the next time that they would see each other 
we knew that Peter was not going to be the same. And so it feels like that with this, where Subaru is Katniss and Jenny is Peter. that the next time these two are going to see each other, they're going to have to duke it out, possibly to the death. With the Hunger Games, thank God that never really happened with Peter and Katniss, but from this, it feels like we're getting that moment. And I don't really want to see these two sisters fight because they love each other so freaking much. And... I don't think either one of them, whether both of them were brainwashed or not, could do it. It's very similar to the, it's not the first Pretty Cure movie. I think it's the second one. I've talked about it before, um, slash tweeted about it before. It's the one scene where both black and white under the influences of the bad guys end up fighting. And it's a really emotional, impactful moment. And it's just like, it's something that you never really would see for those two because of the fact is that Cure Black and Cure White really truly love each other so freaking much that, you know, these two will go to the ends of the earth together. So to see them fighting under their influence, it really truly hurts you as a watcher and such. And so I feel like we are going to get that. And, it, and it's gonna like really, regardless, it's gonna hurt. It's gonna hurt. And I'm not really truly ready for that. I don't like it in shows where eventually they take people and they're like, yes, we're going to have a fight. But I'm like, yeah, I get it. I get it for the entertainment value. I'm not mad at that. But when it's the emotional standpoint, it really, truly breaks you because you don't, Ooh, excuse me, sorry. You don't want to see two people who really love each other and care for each other so freaking much to hurt each other. It just hurts. It hurts. I mean, I think anyone to the core, like, damn, like, especially when you get to know and you've grown with those characters and such, and you know everything almost about them, like, damn. No, I'm not ready for it, damn it. But other than that, guys, that is my reaction, that is my reaction and review towards episodes 17 and 18 of Magical Girl Lyrical Nano Hush Strikers. If you guys enjoyed it, please give me a like. It really helps me out. Also, subscribe to my channel and make videos every single day. Join the Master Squad. And of course, I will see you guys officially all next Saturday for Patreons and everybody else next Wednesday for episodes 19 and 20. But until then, I will see you guys all next time. Bye, guys!